There's a house that I've always really loved. It's called the U House and it was designed by the architect Toyo Ito. There's just something about the idea of the house that's shaped like a letter that's just so cool and I'd love to visit this house someday. But I can't and neither can you because the house was demolished in 1997. Architecture is like that, and sometimes its masterpieces come down, and sometimes they're never even built at all. While we can read about these buildings and see photographs of them, we'll never be able to visit them or experience them in the same way. But I want to do my part to change that, one building at a time, by constructing 3D models of these unbuilt or unbuilt buildings and exploring what it would be like to visit them in real time in the computer. So in this video, we'll investigate the U House, we'll do some forensic analysis, we'll reconstruct the building in the computer, and then explore it together walking through it like a video game. I've created chapters for the different parts of the video and the timeline if you'd like to skip around. I'll also leave a link in the description for you to be able to explore the house yourself on your own device, on your own computer or your phone with no extra software or apps that are necessary. So let's get into it. The U House was designed by the architect Toyo Ito in 1976 and was located in Tokyo, Japan. Ito was born in Korea to Japanese parents and studied architecture at the University of Tokyo during the 1960s. He started his own firm in 1971 called Urban Robot, which I would love to hear a little bit more about why he did that, but then he changed it to a name that was a little bit more professional sounding, Toyo Ito and Associates during the late 1970s. Ito designed the U House early in his career while he was doing mostly houses in and around Tokyo. The U House shares some similarities with another house that he designed at the time, the house in Kimawada. They both have very simple shapes and plan, they are centrally arranged, and include stepped wall interiors and concrete construction. However, the U House is widely considered his masterpiece from this era of his production. Not all of Toyo Ito's work looks like these two houses though. Prior to the U House, he designed the aluminum house, made with a wood frame and covered in aluminum panels. He would go on to experiment with possibilities for aluminum as a structural material in architecture building. And this fascination with structure would guide much of his work and his collaborations with people like Cecil Bauman. Some highlights of Ito's design work include the Sendai MediaTek, which was designed and built in the 2001. It's an amazing building with 12 expanded columns that hold up six floating floor slabs. Then you have the Ku Chen Fu Memorial Library, a building made of a beautiful field of connected mushroom columns, and the library at Tama Art University, a deformed grid of arches, and that one's my favorite. Of course, Toyo Ito would go on to win the Pritzker Prize in 2013, which is architecture's most prestigious prize bestowed upon a life's work. Toyo Ito designed the house for his sister and her two daughters. They had just lost their husband and father to cancer, and the house was a very personal and specific design to help the family through these particular circumstances. It was even built on a site right next door to Ito's own house, a testament to just how personally invested the architect was with the design. The U-shape is meant to protect the family, and the enclosure created a sanctuary away from the rest of the city while still being located within it. It is a completely interior-focused building to aid in the family's process of recovery and grief. The building's singular purpose is ultimately what led to its demolition once it had served that purpose. The family eventually were able to move forward with their lives and they moved on from the house. And one by one, the occupants moved away, both literally and symbolically, when the clients claimed that the sanctuary began to feel like a cage. The house then sat empty and the site was worth more to sell with the house demolished than it was worth with the house intact. And Ito watched from his neighboring residence as the building he designed was dismantled. It was both sad and an uplifting experience, and is kind of in line with cultural expectations of building life cycles in Japan. So the big design move of the U House is its planned shape. It's like a giant letter U that is closed off the top with a thin bar. While that's pretty obvious, this U shape could be understood in two different ways, both of which figure into the way that Ito designed the rest of the house. One way is that it's a line that started out straight and it was bent around to form the building. The other way to think about it is as if it was an arched shape that was made out of like cookie dough and then using like a cookie cutter you would remove the inner shape from the outer one. So it would be like a subtractive process where you take this out of the larger figure. While this doesn't sound that significant at first, if you're an architect these two different approaches are very different from one another. One is understood sequentially. This is a tube that has a beginning and an end with stops along the way and a procession of different conditions. And then the other way to think about it, the cookie cutter way, is less about a sequence and is more about how one object or one space relates to the boundary or the edge. The program of the U House interior is arranged in a very specific way, and there are basically five main zones. The first is like the public zone or the zone of gathering. The next zone might be a utility zone or for utilitarian activities like in the kitchen or the bathroom. 
Then you have the mother's private space in the cap of the U shape. Then you have the daughter's private spaces at the other end of the U. And these are located so that each inhabitant can have their own private space while still being very close to one another. So you have the mother and the daughter right there next to each other. And in fact, there are windows located along this, this zone here so that the mother and the daughters can see each other when they need to. The dining room table is actually the middle point in the line between the two private zones. I know it doesn't look like it might my diagram, but it's only because I drew my lines on the outside. In this sense, the final zone is the courtyard in the middle, and it's like this chasm between these zones that is navigated around. At the same time, it's this sealed off patch of earth that is only for the family to experience, and it's framed off from the rest of the world. Geometrically, there's a lot packed into the plan as well. And you have the circle on the one side of the view, if you extend the circle in the drawing, you can see how it creates disruptions in the walls around the building. It's almost like the circle is being registered in the walls without explicitly being there. So it's really strongly explicitly here, you know, where that's following the curve, but then it's also kind of showing up over here in other ways. There's also a lot of regular modularity of squares and base sizes. And if you draw a square that is the width size of the building, you end up with this leftover really small bay that is actually the same size as the hallways on the interior. There are also a number of squares and golden rectangles that are guiding the plan. For instance, the line, if you extend the line of the rotated window, it connects to the back corner of the building. And then that creates a line that goes all the way across, that creates a square and a golden rectangle. Left over. For more information on golden rectangles, see the video that I did on the geometry and architecture, and I'll even link it up in the right hand corner. In order to reconstruct the building in the computer, we compiled as many drawings and images as we could. We found drawings from various stages in the building's development, which sometimes had some interesting deviations from what was actually built. For instance, in one, the gap between the mom's room and the daughter's room was much more regularized, and it didn't include all the curved walls and the stuffy walls. Most of the 3D modeling of this building was pretty straightforward, but its most important point is to find the center of the different circles, making sure to locate them accurately, because everything is built up off of those. We start with making the plan as a 2D drawing and then a section and extruding up the walls, sweeping over the roof and adding the interior walls and details. One tricky part is the entrance where different volumes come together and you have to create their intersections just right. And then before you know it, we have a completed three-dimensional model of the U-House to explore. Granted, the model doesn't include information about the environment of the building that it's located within, and visiting a building digitally is obviously not the same as doing it in person. But I think that there's a lot to learn from even walking around the building in virtual environment. So let's go. Exploring the U-House for the first time, I'm struck by a few things. The entire thing is an exercise in compression and decompression. Beginning with the entrance, where we squeeze into a very small, dark, and compressed space, it quickly gives way to a much larger, sunlit one. The space of rectangular walls give way to bends and slopes. One is the relationship between the singular and individually placed elements like openings and how they're situated within the larger overall scheme. They seem curated as if in a museum, located specifically to achieve particular effects. Things unfold from one element to the next. First, we're given a glimpse of something, while most of it is hidden. Then we're encouraged to explore it. A window here, a chair there, a bent wall over here. Windows seem to pull us through from one space to the next. For instance, we see light from the window to the courtyard before we can see the window itself. It's shining on the dining room table like a beacon, which is placed as a roadblock in our journey. The sloping ceiling creates some interesting perspectival illusions, making certain things seem further away than they are or appear closer than they are. 
Things are presented in layers, looking through multiple frames or seeing across spaces and into others. This is done so specifically that sometimes it seems even humorous. Like the random window has its own personality because it's too high or too small or framed so perfectly so as to seem comical. The lightheartedness is fleeting though, as the entire interior of the house feels imposed upon by the courtyard, which really spreads out within the boundary of the overall house. The smaller rooms, which are arranged along the outer wall, serve to push people right up against the inner lining, like they're being squeezed between a rock and a hard place. All right, all in all, I'm pretty surprised by the U House. Coming into this, I didn't understand how the building could have ever been demolished. People who were saying it was like a cave or like a sanctuary, they just kind of sounded like they'd never seen a good simple building before. And because I love buildings that are like this in simple shapes, I just, you know, I couldn't comprehend how no one could have appreciated it. But I was honestly kind of wrong about that. This house is pretty heavy and it's dark. And I don't think I realized just how closed off the courtyard space was to the interior of the house. If this house was built again or under like di different circumstances, circumstances, the interior wall would certainly be made out of glass, opening up the spaces of the interior to the courtyard space a little bit more. I'm not saying that this would improve the house, I just mean that it would make it more in line with what we'd expect for a house that would have a similar configuration like this. So while I lament losing such a great piece of architecture to the wrecking ball, the U House did live a good life. It did what it was asked to do, and now it's gone. While you can't go visit the building to determine this yourself in person, maybe you can use this model to imagine what it would be like to be there if you did live inside of it. I'd love to be able to do more videos like this on unbuilt or demolished buildings. So if you enjoyed the building, let me know with a video like. Also leave a comment about your thoughts about the U House. Let's build an active conversation around the building. I'm also open to other suggestions of building that could be built and explored in 3D. If you'd like to see all the new videos that I make when they come out, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell. The bell actually makes sure that you see them. Also be sure to check out some of my other videos linked right here for your convenience. See you next time.